it's Ashley and I'm back with another video and of course we're going to be doing a reaction to Inform Overload but this is their top 10 celebrities that can't stand each other and let's see I can think of two uh, J-Lo and Jane Fonda and I'm not the biggest fan of J-Lo so hmm. And I like Jane Fonda. And then Mariah Carey and J-Lo. <laughs> uh, they're both divas. So that one. Mm, mm. But you know what I have tried for Miss Mariah. And that puts me more in her favor. Her cookies that are on all the food delivery apps. Before I started uh, trying to get uh, more serious about losing weight again. I ordered for Mariah's cookies. They're delicious. And I highly recommend them. I like the Heath, like the Heath candy bar. She has a Heath one that's delicious. There was a gingerbread one that was delicious. The chocolate chip. And I think there's like a macadamia white chocolate one. That one was also delicious. But anyways. The silver screen, the place where actors Yay. transform into charismatic characters who fall in love or fight to the death. We are always here for the entertainment. There's something about being on set with someone for extremely long hours over the course of months that can spark an off-screen romance or an off-screen hatred, all without the viewers and fans knowing until later. This much is true for today's episode. I imagine things get pretty heated when you're forced to be around someone you hate, and in some cases have to like make out with them if they're your on-screen lover. But even an on-screen best friend can be tough to act through when you despise the person playing the part next to you. Right now, Sounds like Gossip Girl. The <laughs> but their characters don't like each other. They have a love hate relationship. Io. Well, it's Gravy Fam. You are watching IO. I'm Charlotte. On this channel, we tell you about trending topics. Subscribe for a different take on the news and follow the IO team on social media. Alright, starting off our list at number 10, we have Vin oh, Diesel man. and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. It is easy to think... Man, when I heard about that, I felt some kind of way because... I loved Vin Diesel ever since I've seen him in Fast and Furious, like, I think, like, I don't know. Well, I went and seen it at the movie theaters, and as soon as he came on screen, I was like, oh, that's my crush right now. Any other, any other celebrity that I've had the hots for disappeared, and I loved him for quite a long time until this one, like, his, I was like, because he seemed so cool. I was like, that's weird. And I think probably it's just an ego thing because his character was amazing. Like the main point of the show. And then they did a whole spinoff with The Rock because it's The Rock and everybody freaking loves him. Because What's-His-Name also had an issue with him, but he apologized. Uh, Tyrese, when he was doing that video crying. I don't know if that's the same. I don't know if that's the same issue, but I just remember that video of him crying. I'll insert. it. But yeah, I was like, why he got these grown men on here acting like this? <laughs> The actors Vin Diesel and Dwayne Johnson are best friends. They're both talented actors and have amazing bodies. They're both bald. They're both bald with like stacked bodies. Mm -hmm. Their dispute began when they both started on The Fast and the Furious. Things got so bad between them that they refused to share the same set during the filming of the movie. Apparently in 2016, Johnson decided to share with fans on Instagram his opinion about his co-stars. He claimed to enjoy working with all his female co-stars, referring to them as always amazing. But for his male co-stars, he had something else to say. He revealed that some of them do not comport themselves as valid men and true professionals. Later on in an interview with Rolling Stone, he disclosed that his comment was all about Vin Diesel, which is like so surprising. I thought The Rock was like friends with everybody, you know, right? like this big like happy teddy bear. It's like surprising to know that he could ever have a feud with anybody. At number 
Avon, you have Channing Tatum and Emma Watson. What? Apparently, really? It's Watson, random. Like totally random. By Channing Tatum's raunchy behavior on set. In the 2013 movie, This is the End, the actress oh. walked off set when she saw Tatum in an almost nude outfit break dancing. An unbothered Channing Tatum kept on dancing and having a blast with his other co-stars as he made jokes at Watson's reaction. According to the social media testimony of an extra known only as Courtney, Emma Watson was so distraught by the sight of a thong-clad Channing Tatum that she walked off set, which honestly doesn't necessarily come as a shock to me. I mean, this is Emma Watson we're talking about. Pretty much the epitome of a good girl. I'm pretty sure Emma Watson shits rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> Next up at number eight, we have Victoria Justice and I don't think she'd be that uptight about it, but you don't know her. You never know. It might come as a surprise to discover that Tori and Kat weren't actually best friends in real life. You might be surprised to find out that the two have allegedly been feuding for the past decade. Following the show's cancellation after four seasons, a social media feud between the two stars began with Grande tweeting, quote, Sweetheart, the only reason why Victoria's ended is because one girl didn't want to do it. She chose to do a solo tour instead of a cast tour. If we had done a cast tour, Nickelodeon would have ordered another season of Victoria's while Sam and Kat filmed simultaneously, but she chose otherwise. I'm sick of this BS. End quote. Justice tweeted back saying, Some people would throw someone they consider a friend under the bus just to make themselves look good. Hashtag stop being a phony. Hashtag if only they knew. Ooh. Ooh. Saucy. <laughs> Despite Ariana Grande reaching out to Victoria Justice with an apology for any confusion Black. surrounding a previous <laughs> Seventeen magazine interview, it appears as if Victoria Justice wanted nothing to do with her. Victoria revealed to Entertainment Tonight that she does not think she and Ariana Grande will ever work together again. Despite their long-lasting differences, the two appear to have put it all aside for a 2020 Victoria's reunion on Zoom. <laughs> Coming in hot at number seven on this list, we have Shia LaBeouf and Tom Hardy. While shooting the 2012 mm. film Lawless, I'll pick Tom Hardy, especially Tom Hardy after the shit Shia LaBeouf did. The, cameras weren't rolling. the filmmaker also confirmed during a Reddit AMA several years ago that, quote, there was definitely a fight between them. It escalated to the point where they both had to be restrained. Tom Hardy confirmed the confrontation, saying that LaBeouf, in a moonshine-induced rage, knocked him out cold, which is something LaBeouf all but confirmed in a March 2018 Esquire profile. Meanwhile, Shia later cited the incident as nothing but part of their character's brotherly love. Okay, Shia. Yeah, Near okay. track record, that sounds pretty believable. Also, it's moonshine. I can't be held responsible for what I do when I drink moonshine. At number six, we're bringing you Lena Headey and Jerome Flynn. Over the years, HBO's Game of Thrones has garnered lots of devoted fans. It's one of my favorite shows of all time, he? even with the terrible ending. Nonetheless, mm. it wouldn't be such a surprise if many viewers oh, haven't noticed that, that Jerome Flynn and Lena Headey's characters, Cersei the Mad Queen and Bronn, have never actually been in the same room on the show. We got to know that both Headey and Flynn were once in a private romantic oh, relationship. Oh, yeah, they were dating. This I remember hearing so much about that. On set that. The producers made sure they were never placed on the same set. At the end of season seven, where many characters gathered at the Dragon Pit Summit, Bronn skipped the event and instead went ahead to grab a drink. Of course he did. Of course he did. His act might be in the role, but it doesn't mean there was no personal reason behind it. We are halfway there. At number five, we have Leah Michelle and Naya Rivera. Like, of course they're on this list. Of course. Right. Iconic, iconic feud. What happens when you have a bunch of 20 and 30 year olds playing high school teenagers? They yeah, start like acting like teenagers. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty sure Leah Le Le Michelle is the, is the common denominator mm -hmm. in all these problems. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, we know that now. That sure was the case with Leah Michelle and Naya Rivera on the set of Glee. Clearly, the two didn't get along, but apparently the drama resulted in a major altercation on set. In addition to rumors about Leah Michelle and Chris Colfer plotting to get Naya Rivera and Darren Chris kicked off the show. Rivera stated that one of the Glee writers once said that Leah and her were like two sides of the same battery, and that about sums us up. She added, we are both strong-willed and competitive, not just with each other, but with everyone, and that's not a good mixture. In the end, unfortunately, Leah Michelle got exactly what she wanted, and Rivera was written out of the show. <laughs> At number four, we have Freddie Prince Jr. and Kiefer Sutherland. Freddie Prince Jr. has been very vocal about his negative experience wow. working alongside Kiefer Sutherland on the show 24. Jr. said, I quote, I did 24. Oh. It was terrible. I hated every moment of it. Kiefer was the most unprofessional dude in the world. That when he's drinking? talking trash, I'd say it to his face. I think that everyone that works with him has said that. I just wanted to quit the business after that, so I just sort of stopped. Funny thing is, they hadn't actually worked together for about five years, so like, why I start trash talking after? Kiefer Sutherland's representative gave a classy response, which said, Kiefer worked with Freddie Prince Jr. more than five years ago, and this is the first he's heard of Freddie's grievances. Kiefer enjoyed working with Freddie and wishes him the best. <laughs> I like, yeah, right. Great, and Prince looked like a jealous whiner. I actually have a personal story about Kiefer Sutherland, like not personal to me, but uh, listen, okay, so a designated survivor used to film in Toronto, and I had a boyfriend 
trying to lose a grip on set. Apparently, when Kiefer Sutherland walked onto set, everyone had to stop talking. Kiefer did not want anyone speaking around him because that supposedly, like, broke his concentration. That being said, Kiefer was nice to the crew when the cameras weren't rolling. At number three, we have Shonda Rhimes and Katherine Heigl. Now, this one is a little different because Shonda Rhimes... She wrote her ass off that the show. ...the creator of the show, which, in my opinion, is, like, a way worse choice for a feud. Like, you don't want to... You don't want to fuck with the creators or the writers or the directors. Like, they're the reason why you're there, okay? Heigl hasn't headlined many major films or television shows since her departure from Grey's Anatomy, and many suspect that it's Black due to falling out with Grey's creator, Shonda Rhimes. When Heigl earned an Emmy nomination for her role as Izzy Stevens in 2008, the actress actually opted out because she wasn't given enough quality material to even be considered for an Emmy. She said in a statement, okay, I did not want to potentially take away an opportunity from an actress who was given such materials. Rhymes kept it professional, but the damage, yeah. Uh, uh. Even when Heigl publicly expressed a desire to revisit her role on the show, the showrunner mm -mm. coolly declined. In a 2014 interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Rhymes threw some serious shade. She said in an interview about her show Scandal, I quote, there are no Heigls in this situation. I don't put up with BS or nasty people. I don't have time for it. In 2015, creator Shonda Rhimes confessed to killing off characters on her show because she didn't like them. And Heigl actually wasn't the only one that had an ugly ending. Several of the other actors also got killed off, so take that information what you will. At number two on this list, we have Blake Lively and Leighton Meester, and honestly, this one hurts a little. It does. <laughs> Sorry, Gossip Girl fans, your favorite Upper East Siders aren't I knew really that as close though. as they I knew seem about on the show. One. Lively and Meester reportedly had a strained relationship behind the scenes, which sources attributed to long working days on set. One rumor is, is that the friendship ended when Lively didn't congratulate Meester on her engagement to Adam Brody. But we have a feeling that things weren't great long before that. One Gossip Girl source spelled out the actress's issues with each other plainly. They said, Leighton thinks Blaine is an egomaniac who views her time on the TV set as slumming, and Blake feels stifled. She's just ignoring her co-star because she knows bigger things are in store. In response to the drama, Lively's publicist didn't even really try to spin the rumors. They said, Blake and Leighton have never been best friends and never professed to be. The statement clarified, Blake goes to work, does her job, and goes home. Oh, and the moment you've all been waiting for, no surprise here, and number uh, one yeah, on this list, we, we have Sarah about Jessica them. Parker and Kim, Kim Cattrall. Cattrall. Both actors are best friends on Sex in the City, but they are far from being friends in real life. According to Cattrall, Parker never really liked her, and she doesn't know why. She revealed that she found Parker's behavior toxic, be like as she stalled production with her diva acts. Rumors also claim that Cattrall became upset when she learned that Parker earned more than her co-stars. The bad relationship between both actors delayed production when the Sex and the City movie was being filmed. Parker offered Cattrall sympathy for the loss of Cattrall's brother, and she replied harshly. Cattrall posted on Instagram, I don't need your love or support at this tragic time. She claimed the only reason why Sarah Jessica Parker gave her condolences was for attention and to amplify her nice girl persona further. Years later, talk of the third Sex and the City movie being in the works were shut Gosh. down when rumors about Cattrall being a diva started circulating, which is interesting because first it was Sarah Jessica Parker being a diva. Hmm. Weird. Hollywood gossip insinuated that the film wouldn't happen because she was holding up negotiations with her demands. Cattrall took personal offense to the rumors and fired back by throwing some shade in Sarah Jessica Parker's way. She said, I quote, this is where I take to task the people from Sex and the City and specifically Sarah Jessica Parker. I really think that she could have been nicer. I don't know what her issue is. I never have. Sophie! Which is just too bad because, like, it's one of the best shows of all time. Like, it, like especially all for time. women, Sex and the mm. City was just goals. It's like it's to find good, out that though. they weren't as good friends as they appear to be on the show but anyways i digress anyways guys i'm just gonna quickly wrap this one up with some comment features all right so feuds do you know about any of these i knew about quite a few of them some of them were surprising uh but not too not too surprising really like but the uh, Emma Watson one, I thought that one was weird because I seen, I feel like she's, like she'd be more fun or she wouldn't have an issue with seeing parts of a guy's body like that. I don't want to try and like shame her or anything, but I just find that weird and I don't really would. I don't really think that would be considered a feud. She just walked off the set because she felt uncomfortable. But anyways, what do you guys think? Which feud did you already know about? Um, the Gossip Girl one. When I was at the height of Gossip Girl uh, obsession, 
I already kind of heard rumblings that they didn't like each other. So that I'm not surprised by. Their characters on the show were like those were friends, but we're not really friends, frenemies. So yeah, that vibe came off in their characters anyway. But if you enjoyed the video, don't forget, forget to leave a like. Uh, drop a comment and your opinions below. Um, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!